Welcome to the Curious Advantage podcast, an exploration of the idea of curiosity and its increasing importance for thriving in the digital age from the authors of The Curious Advantage. Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Curious Advantage podcast series. This series is about how individuals and organizations use the power of curiosity to drive success in their lives and organizations, especially in the context of our new digital reality. It brings to life the latest understanding from neuroscience, anthropology, history, business, and behaviorism about curiosity and makes these useful for everyone. My name is Simon Brown. I'm one of the co-authors of the book, The Curious Advantage. Today, I'm here with my co-authors, Paul Ashcroft. Hello. And Garrick Jones. Hi there. And we're delighted to be joined by Gordon Fuller, Vice President and Chief Learning Officer at IBM. Hi, Simon. IBM is a fantastic example of an organization that places learning and skills right at the heart of its business. To start with, we'd love to explore with you today what that looks like and how it's been achieved. So I'm sure everyone's heard of IBM, uh, but maybe not everyone knows what the company looks like today. Could you maybe start by introducing the company as it stands at the moment and your learning team's role in supporting your employees? IBM's got 352,000 employees and 175 countries, essentially an innovative technology and services company. We focus on many critical technologies, but primarily cloud, AI, security, blockchain, and quantum computing. So that's the organization. My group, IBM Learning, is responsible for the learning strategy of IBM, and that's achieved through innovation, development of leading edge experiences, instructional science, which brings together design, deployment tools and technology, and behavioral science. And in addition, um, we lead the learning delivery for the company, the digital nudging, marketing, analysis, and insights, and ops and admin and event and learning experience ecosystem. So looking after 352,000 people in 175 countries is a a huge job, let alone keeping them uh, completely up to date with the very latest skills so that they can work with other companies and advise them. Tell us more, Gordon, around what, what learning looks like at IBM to be able to meet that task. To start with, let's look at the mission, which is really to develop fully the potential within IBMers so they can deliver excellence to our clients. There's four main areas. The first one is we strive to always provide a consumer-grade experience for learners at every single learning and career guidance intervention. Second, we have complete transparency when it comes to careers, emerging skills, and emerging roles. This is critical because we believe that transparency builds trust, and we need that with our learners. We have personalization at every level, irrespective of demographics, business unit, or uh, geography or culture. And lastly, we, um, we form a social contract where we have the committed learner is one part of that triumvirate of responsibility, we call it. Secondly, the ecosystem that we provide is the best ecosystem we know, the best experience to not only attract the best and brightest recruits, but also to develop and retain them And lastly, we enable our managers to make that mental shift from being providers of employment to enablers of employability. I know from our previous conversations, Gordon, that under that transparency piece, there's a lot of linkages out into people's sort of broader career and understanding what roles are available and things. Could you maybe tell us a bit about how you you link uh, learning and skills into the other HR processes? Because I, th- I think there's a fascinating story there. We believe in IBM that learning is a strategic tool. So we literally use it at every stage of the talent life cycle from recruitment where we test for learning agility to pre-hire, where we position for early success in the company. We have an onboarding process called Fast Start. We get people involved in learning in different cohorts. We give them personalized learning paths. When they're been in the company for a while, we get them immediately involved in future skilling and career guidance and career placement. So we, we want learning to be positioned as the key to employability. We, we know that the half-life of skills is changing uh, and it's reducing every year. So we, we really get people into mindset. They need to be continuous learners as long as they're working, not just with IBM, but with any organization. Mm-hmm. 
Gordon, IBM is known to be a really forward-looking organisation. We're wondering what does the role of curiosity play within IBM and how do you encourage people there to be curious? For example, what kinds of recognition or reward or reinforcement do you use? I believe that curiosity is the fuel for continuous learning. And again, if, if you don't have continuous learning, you're not going to keep your skills up to date and therefore you're going to lose employability, that employability factor. So we, we truly believe that if you can become a continuous learner, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Motivation 3.0. So we try and give by giving them this ecosystem that they can uh, get curious about, they can search in, that gives them tips and guidance and helps them to move it. They start getting first factor of motivation, which is autonomy. Now, that eventually leads to mastery, and we, we measure that through badges, certifications, recognition. And once that happens, you got those first two, and we get them involved in give back, they get that greater sense of purpose. So we, we believe that that's our way forward. We also tell people it's okay to fail inside IBM by being curious, and they've tried to discover something, they've tried to build something, it didn't work but we also show them how to learn from those moments. So we think that failure can be a real personal growth opportunity, uh, and we recognize people for being super learners, and now this new level of learning, we have Olympic learners. Recognize the, the linkage to Dan Pink's work there in um, mastery, autonomy, and, and purpose. Um, I know you've been really successful in encouraging people to actually spend that time learning um, and your executives even more so. So can you tell us more about that? Well, we, we've got this very powerful learning experience platform, but we want people to learn 24-7. So we developed uh, a mobile application that accesses that platform and it combines things like self-selected goals, cohort targets with digital nudging to keep people on track, help them. It's not it's not bugging them. It's actually reminding them and keep them on track for the learning goals. So we integrate the learning experience with gamifications. I say there are challenges, cognitive recommendations, behavioral science to encourage that habit of continuous learning. I, I tell you, we're also blessed with a, a fantastic model in our CEO, who is, as we would call them in IBM, an Olympic learner. He completes regularly more than 250 hours of learning every year. And he and all our executives, myself included, we take a, a advantage of a program we developed inside IBM called Positive Leadership Edge. And it helps all executives and managers on how they relate to their teams and how learning and development strengthens those relationships through genuine engagement and building positive experiences. In our research for the book, The Curious Advantage, Gordon, we've come across again and again and again the companies who are doing the best, who are really getting it right, putting curiosity at the center of their learning program, always have one thing in common, and that is that their senior executives are leading the way in terms of learning. I think the same thing you're saying is happening at IBM. What have been some of the other hard parts about inspiring curiosity? I think that initially the hardest part is finding that spark of curiosity that I think is inside everybody. And ma many things can sometimes dampen that, that spark of curiosity as we get older. You know, the curiosity we had as a child, it's, it's fascinating. And if you can find that spark and fan it so you get this flame of continuous learning. And the way we've tried to approach it is we allow the individuals to have a very powerful skills assessment, let them see where their skills adjacency is, give them sight of emerging roles, create personalized learning paths, allow them to test out you know, what they think they know, what they don't know, and try and reduce the whole frustration around learning. We also say that people really should be asking questions all the time. And it's okay to ask questions. I, I think many of us, many people feel awkward about asking questions. They don't want to appear dumb. I think we all know that there's no dumb questions, but there's many, many dumb answers, but we help them to find a way through that. You're listening to The Curious Advantage podcast, inspired by the book, The Curious Advantage, written by Paul Ashcroft, Simon Brown, and Garrick Jones. The Curious Advantage book is now available to purchase on Amazon. I mean, 
it's clear this has been a really important journey that you guys have been on. What would you say are the most important factors that have got you to where you are today? Well, a lot of it is how we actually work together. So in our case, I think there's been three big factors. One, we leverage the principles of agile, design thinking, and offering management. So that, that's in our DNA inside IBM. We use that all the time. Secondly, we, we try and get everybody in learning in my organization to think like the business, know the strategic imperatives. We can't behave like the business if we don't know what, what the big issues are that they are tussling with. And the last one is really to restlessly move forward, to iterate, iterate, iterate. We, we've also positioned ourselves in, a, I think, a different role from where I've seen many other organizations and companies. We're not a support organization. We're not the standard function that every organization has. We really try and show our value by showing how learning impacts the critical business in, uh, outcomes. So we're a strategic business enabler within IBM. We would not have achieved that position if it hadn't been for those three factors I just shared with you. I know in, in learning to think like the business and looking at the impact that one's actions have, you've been very successful in actually doing what many other companies haven't been able to achieve to really quantify the impact that, that learning or curiosity has. So tell us more on that, Gordon. Well, we, we measure the impact. We look at our business outcomes and we use analytics to see the causal chain of learning. So what happened when we built capacity? What happened when we engaged with our learners? And the, the resulting level of that client engagement, which is a real profound effect on the top and bottom line of any organization. So it's, it's really about those that engagement. We look at career velocity, which, uh, again, I, I'd speak to a lot of companies, and I, I don't see an awful lot of attention being placed on career velocity. So what I mean by that is, if I look at our super learners, they have a significantly faster career velocity than non-super learners. So that, if, if that isn't a motivational factor for individuals, I, I don't know what is. We use Watson intelligence inside IBM a lot. So we get feedback from sentiment analysis tools. We do regular pulse surveys. And obviously, when we look at the learning experience, we measure MPS and we strive always to improve that MPS. It's, it's pretty high. It's uh, 61 just now, but, you know, we need to get it even better than that. You mentioned Watson and you talked earlier about the ecosystem that you've put around the organization, put around the individual for their personal learning journeys and so on. Can you talk a little bit more about the kind of the technical ecosystem or the, the learning ecosystem that you've created for the organization? We, we see it as a learning experience platform, which takes learning from inside IBM and outside IBM. I don't want people to come into our environment and think, well, I need to know something. I have to go outside. They, they literally can get, if you like, the world of learning from different sources at their fingertips. We use AI a lot in that and Without going into major detail, we use things like Watson Tag Advisor, which helps to manage an ever-changing expanse of opportunities that classifies content. We use natural language qualifiers uh, to analyze each interaction that we have in the platform, which helps us smarter tag. We have smarter recommendations. We have an Amplify feedback tool. Uh, which allows us to analyze all the feedback that comes into our ecosystem uh, and rapidly classify the topics and the sentiments that we can promptly respond to the things that are, that are most uh, pressing. I have to say that 84% of the feedback we get inside the, the platform uh, is very, very positive. We've got chat advisors, chatbots, et cetera. So that, that's really, it's how... We have built the ecosystem. We wanted to make it consumer grade, and uh, I think we've achieved that. Gordon, it sounds like IBM is putting quite an investment into learning and into its people being able to learn. What are you seeing as the business benefit of all this time of people learning and being curious? And do you have any data around uh, some of the benefits that you're seeing? I shared that engagement is incredibly important to us. And I know if you look at any of the, the studies 
on engagement. It has a major impact on the growth and the revenue of an organization. I think it's Bain that have said that if the, the companies that have the higher engaged employees uh, have, uh, I think it's a 2.5% revenue over companies with less engaged workers. Uh, Gallup said that highly engaged teams show 21% greater profitability. There's another one from Workforce Research Foundation that showed that active employee engagement can result in uh, profits of up to 2,400 per employee. But the engagement for us starts with the experience. So that the, the chain that we look at is if we create a great experience, that impacts positively up to two-thirds of your engagement growth. Now, if your folks are engaged or your employees are engaged, that means that clients will have a positive experience and therefore their positive experience increases their engagement with the IBM corporation. So it's this virtuous circle of create experience, create better engagement. It helps the top line and the bottom line. There's some pretty compelling data and examples that you give there. But if there are leaders out there who are still sort of wondering how do they build skills in their organization or, or how do they inspire curiosity within their organization, is there any advice from your experiences that you could give them on, on where to start or how to do that? I would go back to, as I say, some of the factors that we've we've gone on. This transfer of responsibility, you really do have to get the ecosystem the committed learner and the manager as the enabler of employability working together on the development of the individual. And if we do that, I mean, that's essentially a culture change and it certainly doesn't happen overnight. I would never want to give anybody that impression. But our leaders do publicly embrace learning. They promote it through active participation. They are leaders for role models and curiosity. They, they generate increased trust by vulnerability, by sharing what they don't know and therefore what they're curious about and what they're learning. At a very practical level, I think they also have to articulate very clearly to the business what the future needs are of the business and the capacity and the capability levels that are, are going to be needed. And that's all to do with that transparency element. We Our learners must feel that they are active participants in the development and the growth of the company, and therefore they will become active participants in their own development and growth. Absolutely. I know that manager and leader role modeling is, is so t- critical to, to build that active commitment as well. Are there any pitfalls or sort of watch outs from the journey that you've been on that could help others that are embarking on this path? How long have we got? Um, <laughs> uh, well, uh, let me think of the, the, the sort of top ones. I, I think. And this, this is reflected inside IBM. So what I'm going to talk about, um, the, the learning aspect, you will see inside IBM, the business aspect. First and foremost, I think, stay user-centric at all times. We, we've all seen where new initiatives have come into an organization and they've been put in for the benefit of the administration or the process owners or the budget holders or whatever. Please, 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 I would say stay centric user-centric at all times, make data-driven decisions, portray them in ways that that impact hard business outcomes. Where appropriate, I would say use behavioral science. We, We try and do that all the time and keep the experience accessible, but also digestible. Certainly from a learning perspective, I think that there's a lot of programs and initiatives that are out there that quite honestly, they're, they're a marathon. And I think learning and curiosity should be like a, a delightful walk in the park. It should be a hard, hard, hard race. A curious culture is a game changer. What does curiosity mean for you? Follow hashtag Curious Advantage and join the conversation. Gordon, we've talked uh, quite a bit about IBM. Uh, we can talk about you for a moment. Yeah. How are you personally curious? And could you share, you know, what are some of your you know, daily or regular practices that keep you curious in your work and in the things that you do? I mean, for me, curiosity, it's, it's the gift that makes everything possible. Nobody can take it away from you and it, it, it doesn't um, have any boundaries. And what I try and do, I, I'm a believer 
also in, I think, James Clear and Atomic Habits laid out very nicely. Create the habits, which if they're done regularly and often enough, lead to a change in behavior. And if you keep that behavior going long enough and it's positive behavior, it leads to a culture change. And that's how we start with individuals and that's how we try and build it up within teams in the organization. So personally, I, I have a, a skills build situation and it's booked into my calendar every single morning. So it doesn't matter where I am, what time zone, anything. I can, I can take time out to explore something. I, I'm a naturally curious person. And I, I genuinely believe that what the mind can conceive, man can achieve. And the first step in that is to be curious. So I, I've got no special skills, but I do like to try new things. And I would say to, to somebody, connect the dots between what seem to be unrelated areas and let your curiosity take there and see how you could relate them to get a positive outcome. Gordon, we think that curiosity is the greatest driver of value in the digital age. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? And, and perhaps a better way to ask that question is, what do you think the future of curiosity and learning is? Where is it all going? You've talked about AI and the ecosystem and everything you're putting around the learner. Where do you think we're going to end up? If you look at AI and the impact it's going to have on employment, I think AI will change 100% of jobs within the next five years. And we're seeing it in every area. So if you think of what AI does, it takes over a lot of the consecutive, repeatable tasks. It does them much faster and much better than we can. Should we be frightened of that? No. It is one of the most liberating aspects of working life that we will ever see because it allows us to focus on, while AI is doing the best thing it can do, it allows us to focus on the best that we can be. So to look at our people skills, so to get curious about how we relate to others, how we can influence others, how we can learn from them, how we can recognize opportunities when we see it and work with people. And, and if you like, manage disparate teams, not with authority, but with influence. So I, I think that's where curiosity is going to come in. It, we, we have to embrace it. It is the natural gift. And I, as I said earlier, it's the fuel for me that drives continuous learning. Simon, you and I have exchanged emails in the past, and you know I've got this little advice below my signature. It says, don't be a know-it-all, be a learn-it-all. And for me, Absolutely. that starts with curiosity. I love that the uh, the fuel for continuous learning. So, I mean, we covered some some amazing areas there. What would be your key takeaway for people listening to this conversation, Gordon? I think that anybody can build and strengthen their curiosity muscle. And for me, that starts with asking questions and, and keep on asking. Make learning the habit. I say it changes your behavior, and it can change the behavior of those around you. And that's when you help to create a, a culture. Develop a passion for lifelong learning. Most importantly, I, the message I give everybody that works me, or even if they, they don't have children, but they know children. If you know children and you have them, encourage them to ask questions, but don't always have the answers for them. Ask them how they might find the answers that they're looking for and enjoy through them what I that, that magic moment when you see somebody having that aha moment. You know, they've discovered it for themselves. You maybe helped them to get to the threshold, but they went on and they their curiosity and their learning helped them to get to that very special point. I think that's a, a lovely end to our conversation of how we can inspire curiosity for future generations. So thank you so much for joining us, Gordon. It's been a really interesting conversation. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Garrick. Uh, I really enjoyed today. So you've been listening to a Curious Advantage podcast. Uh, join the conversation at hashtag Curious Advantage. Subscribe today and keep exploring curiously. See you next time. Thank you for listening to the Curious Advantage podcast. The Curious Advantage book is now available to purchase on Amazon. This podcast is produced by Aliki Palinelli and edited by John McGinty and Jill Damatak-Futter.